My name is Tamika, and this is my story. I am a sickle cell warrior and a COVID-19 survivor. On April 10th was the first time I remember having symptoms for COVID-19. I had a mild chest pain and a little cough. By the 10th, by the 15th, I'm sorry, it increased dramatically to fatigue, headaches to the point where I could not function, coffin fits that last for about 20 minutes at a time, and my chest pain grew so worse that I felt like my chest was gonna explode every time I tried to take a breath. My mother encouraged me to call my doctor. I called him and he told me that my symptoms were not COVID-19 related. He did tell me though that I needed to be careful because I didn't need to get COVID-19 because if I did, due to my pre-existing condition, I would die, most likely. I was shocked, <laughs> number one, that my doctor told me that, and scared because obviously I didn't want to die. <laughs> um, at the time, my mom had already started me on um, breathing in the steam of orange peel, lemon peel, lime peel, salt, ginger, Vicks, um, and peppermint oil. So he told me to continue to do that and to use my speedometer. So on the 23rd, decided to get a test. Got tested. By the Monday, I got a call from a tracer from the Department of Health, basically asking me who I came in contact with because I was acknowledged as someone that tested positive for COVID-19. I was shocked because I'm like, I didn't know I was positive. And so it felt like a literal blow that I was finding out that I was positive. The previous weekend, my family and I had a family brunch and I cooked all the omelets. So I'm now worried like I tested positive and I was around my family. So what's gonna happen with them? So I had already been sick for about two weeks at that time. And I figured my symptoms would start getting better. Nothing would really happen. That did not happen though. <laughs> I started getting worse and started having now breathing issues. I wasn't eating. I couldn't sleep at all. I was not sleeping during the whole time that I was sick, only for about maybe an hour from like 6 a.m. to maybe 8 a.m. During this time, also my mom was using, um, patting my back, which really helped me with breathing. I also used the asthma pump when, at nighttime when I didn't want to wake my mom up and just continue with the treatments. Bought a humidifier, put tea tree oil and the different oils in it to help with my lung capacity. On May 3rd, I remember feeling so drained and so tired, just feeling exhausted. And I decided that I wasn't going to watch a, a church service that morning, but I was gonna try to sleep. Something told me to listen to Elevation Church. They were singing their new song, Rattle, during worship. And after worship ended, Pastor Freddy came out and started screaming, live, live, live. And as he's saying live, I'm responding, but I can't. I have no strength left in me. I can't do this. And I broke down crying because I remember feeling exhausted and drained. Like I couldn't fight anymore. Like the COVID was literally draining me a fight. And I text my mom and I told her, I don't have any fight left in me. I am tired. I don't know who my mother called or text, but I started getting calls and text messages from friends, family members, church members, basically encouraging me, giving me that boost of what I needed, you know, in that moment. And so I got a bit encouragement to go on. The next day, the 4th, I went to CityMD to get a chest x-ray done because I'm like, I'm not getting better. I'm asking the doctor for a chest x-ray and she said, you know, you have classic COVID-19, go home and rest. And I said, no, I need a chest x-ray. She gave me the text, chest x-ray and she said, it's a good thing that we did it because it came back as 
having bad pneumonia on both sides of my lungs. In that moment, I felt relief because now I knew why I wasn't getting better and why I was still sick. I was so afraid though that I would start having a sickle cell crisis and it did happen. I started having pain in my joints and my mom and my sister kept encouraging me to go into the hospital. Um, I didn't because when I spoke to my doctor, he would tell me not to go into the hospital because if I came in, they probably would put me in a ventilator and if I did go in a ventilator, I would die. I asked him if I could come in for treatment, hydration, but he said, because I tested positive, I couldn't be around the cancer patients. So I'm like, so what am I supposed to do, just suffer? Which is basically what I did. I stayed home and suffered. Um, by the 11th, the Monday, um, I finally agreed to go to North Shore LIJ. My mom dropped me there. Um, when we were waiting for the nurse, I looked at my mom and I said, I don't wanna go in there. And she looked at me and she said, don't worry, a lot of people are praying for you. And what I was thinking in my head was, I don't care who's praying for me. You need to take me home right now because I am shaking, I am afraid, and I'm just like, I don't wanna go into this hospital by myself. The nurse comes, we go inside. At first I'm okay, but then the nurse asked me a question and I had to look it up on my phone because I didn't have the information at the time. And I realized that I have no service whatsoever. I immediately break down crying because I'm like, my family's not here. I'm all alone and I'm gonna die in this hospital by myself. And I am freaking out and I'm crying, could not be consoled. And then I remembered when my friends from church called me to pray with me that one of my friends gave me a word and said, you will live and not die. And I literally kept repeating it to myself, you will live and not die, you will live and not die, you will live and not die, until I was able to calm myself down. I was tested that day and I tested negative, thankfully. But I was in the hospital for having um, pain. I was having chest pain that they did not know why. I was having headaches to a point where I was having bags of ice on my head. And they run tests, they could not figure out why. I wasn't able to keep down food. They run tests, they could not figure out why. I was there for 10 days until eventually I started feeling better. I was discharged on the 21st of May, and I was basically told to try to walk maybe five minutes at a time until I can extend it to 10, 15, so on, until I started feeling better so that I could start building back up my lung capacity. Thankfully, today, I can say that I am feeling a lot better. And I just wanna encourage you, um, if you're sick, if you're not well, just to hold on to God's promises. In his word, Isaiah 53, verse five, that tells us by his stripes that we are healed. And I am grateful today for my mom, who literally nursed me back to health, and God, who breathed the breath of life back into my body. And I can say today that my story isn't over.